Welcome to Gildan. Gildan is a leading supplier of quality branded basic family apparel, including t-shirts, fleece, sport shirts, socks, and underwear. Today we are going to show you the basics for successful printing with some of our more popular products. The first step in any print job on our shirts or sweatshirts is creating the screen. A screen is made of a piece of mesh stretched over a frame. A stencil is formed by blocking off parts of the screen in the negative image of the design to be printed. That is, the open spaces are where the ink will appear on the substrate. Once the screen is stretched and in place, you can move to the emulsion phase. Emulsion can be applied directly by hand or indirectly by a machine. Your emulsion manufacturer will have recommendations on how many coats to put down for the print side versus the squeegee side. The two factors to keep in mind for the emulsion process are, one, the thicker the emulsion, the thicker the stencil, thus more ink deposited onto the shirt. Two, the actual size of the screen mesh itself. Once you have coated the screen in emulsion, you must let it thoroughly dry before you print. The next step is to get your design onto the screen. There are different ways to approaching this. You can print to film using a printer, take the film and tape it to the screen, then seal that film to the emulsified screen using a vacuum process. Once the film is adhered to the screen, the screen is exposed to a high intensity light source that burns the design into your emulsion. Check with your manufacturers to get their recommended exposure times as it varies by emulsion. It is highly recommended to do a few exposure tests to ensure you have the right process in place for your materials. The other method is printing the design direct to screen. In this method, you can skip the vacuum process, which saves a bit of time and money. Once your design has been burned into the emulsion, you'll need to rinse off the screen, washing away the shapes of your design, essentially creating a stencil for the ink to pass through later. You're almost ready to start printing. You'll want to tape off the screen and frame to prevent any unwanted ink from leaking. Remember to keep in mind what kind of inks you are working with and what kind of processes you will be adding to your garments. Water-based and plastisols are the two most common inks one would work with. Plastisol inks are a solvent-based ink that can sit on a shelf forever. Once they're mixed, they will keep their color and vibrancy and never cure, unless they are hit with heat. Water-based inks can dry out and will dry in your screens, so always take care when using them. It is recommended to use water-based inks on lighter colored shirts. When using on darker shirts, issues of fading and bleeding can sometimes occur. Mix all your inks based on manufacturer recommendations. There are many recipes out there for ink making, and it can be done manually or by machine. The machines shown here use precise weight measurements to get incredibly accurate to Pantone colors. Your prep work is done. Now it's time to set up for printing. Make sure you set up all your screens and make sure they are in registration. This can be done by eye or by using grid marks and locking down the screens. The number of screens you use will depend on the number of colors for the job, the kind of processes you are adding to the garment, the color of the garment, and the material the garment is made from. Once your pre-registration is done, you may start applying the appropriate inks to each screen. When the ink is on the screen and ready, a squeegee will help push the ink through the screen and the openings you created earlier and transfer the ink directly to the garment. This can be done manually with a hand squeegee or by machine with the use of a flood bar. You will repeat this process for each color of ink that is required and any adhesives or finishing you'd like. One finishing technique you can employ is adding a foil effect. The foil can be applied to any specific area of your shirt to give a shiny, metallic, premium effect. When printing foil effects, it is best to use water-based inks because the foil material will not stick to the inks. It will only stick to the adhesives. If you want to print a foil effect on a plastisol ink, you'll need to add foil resist additives. And most importantly, talk to your ink manufacturer to ensure you're getting the right materials for the job. After the adhesive is added to the print area, you need to run your shirt through the dryer to be cured. Keep in mind the temperatures of the dryer so you don't scorch the shirts. Water-based inks require different temperatures than plastisol inks. You want to make sure you are flash curing the shirts, not scorching them. Once the ink is cured onto the shirt, you can add your foil effects. You can customize your shirts and get creative, adding different foils wherever you want. Simply lay a sheet of foil material over the desired area. It is recommended to place an old shirt or comparable cloth over the foil to temper the heat, allowing for a cleaner release of the foil. 
Lower the heat press down for the specified amount of time. Check with your heat press manufacturer for exact times. Once the shirt is done carefully, peel back the foil material to reveal your new effect. Another finishing technique you can add with the heat press is rhinestones. Rhinestones are available in many shapes, sizes, and colors and can add value to any finished garment. Adding rhinestones does not require a separate adhesive screen during the printing process. Simply place your rhinestones around the garment as desired. Lower the heat press down for the specified amount of time. Check with your heat press manufacturer for exact times. When you're finished, peel back the material and your shirt now has rhinestones and added value. Doing a little work on the front end and speaking to the manufacturers of your inks will go a long way to delivering the best quality print on the best quality product. Visit mygildan.com for more tips, tricks, and information about all things Gildan.